Hi everyone, welcome to today's Bonsai. On today's episode, it's time for some tropical repots. We had a nice bout of rain this morning and the clouds are thickening up and the system is starting to uh, work up to some more rain. So we're gonna have to make this outside portion of today's video quick. So the scoop is, is this coming weekend, the second weekend of July, I have the second workshop of three with the Minnesota Bonsai Society that I'll be leading. And in our summer, July one, we do a tropical plant. So we have some Molinas and we have some Premnas. Now I have about a hundred of them in my yard because we're gonna be getting rid of a lot of them at these workshops, right? Uh, we probably have about 70 uh, people come through the workshop this weekend. So what I have to do is I also am gonna pick a couple of these for myself. So uh, bought a couple extra so I could uh, share the experience with the uh, new MBS members and uh, work on these trees side by side. So they're new species to me, uh, but some really, really exciting looking trees for me. So the rain is just starting to fall right now. So what I wanna show you real quickly is some of the spots in my yard where these trees have been kept for the last month to get them acclimated to Minnesota weather. And then we'll see uh, which one I choose to work on down in the plant room. So the Premna makes a great bonsai with its naturally small leaves. Yeah, it's a tropical bonsai that's used a lot in Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia. And the nice thing about the Premna, as well as the Molina, is it grows very fast and it thickens up really nice. The leaves reduce very nicely. It's a very resilient tree, has few pest problems, and it's known to overwinter well indoors. So the interesting thing about the Premna is uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, repotting the uh, Premna, they talk about uh, every couple of years, and it says when the buds swell. But this is also told uh, in, in, in the literature that this is a tropical tree. In most tropicals, we uh, repot in the summertime. So we're not gonna take too much of the roots off on this. We're gonna be super careful as to not create a lot of harm for the tree. Once the temperatures get below 50, of course, we like to take these inside. Um, it can endure a slight frost, but should be protected in cold frames with temperatures between 32 and 50. So this is like our deciduous trees. This will not be kept in our uh, rooms uh, at a really hot temperature all winter long because uh, according to the care guide that I found um, on um, uh, Empire Bonsai, uh, that these definitely have to do a little bit of, uh, I guess, light dormancy, if you will. We wanna make sure that it's uh, staying between freezing and 50 degrees. So that's gonna be kind of tricky with uh, some folks in, in the uh, Premna. The Molina is pronounced Molina, the G is silent. Molina philippensis, also known as the parrot's beak. Now they're usually uh, shrubs growing 10 to 15 feet tall and again it has this kind of oval uh, to ivy look or the duck foot shape on it. Um, it will develop into a nice bonsai quickly. Um, you're going to keep it away from the freezing temperatures as well. Um, both of these trees, the Premnas and the Molinas, uh, once you get past that five, six set of leaves on growth, you can go ahead and prune down to two or three leaves and you should be good. The Molina back buds really, really nicely on old wood can be defoliated to reduce leaf size. Branches will elongate quickly if left too long, so you want to watch uh, for that. Uh, it will twig out nicely in just two or three growing seasons. The Premna is like a lot of light, an airy place with a lot of light, and you want to make sure that you water them as well. We don't want these to be drying out. These tropical trees, whether it's a Premna or a Molina, we don't want them to dry out. The Premna will need a lot more light and a lot more water than the Molina, but the Molina also being a tropical tree, the Molina will need lots of light and water as well. So of the hundred trees that I have in my yard, I chose these two to work with. So I have the Molina, or also known as the Parrot's Beak tropical tree right here. And then I also have the Premna. So the Premna has a little bit more of the uh, um, typical ficus looking uh, leaf. Um, got some really big ones back there. But both of these varieties look similar from the distance. Um, the difference with the Molina is it has this uh, flower that kind of looks like a parrot beak. Um, and you also can look at the foliage, and the foliage on the Molina will have this um, kind of this like, like um, duck foot or an ivy looking leaf. 
Now, some of them look really small and round, kind of like the Premna, but if you look at this leaf right here, it has this little swooping in leaf and swooping in right there. That leaf right there almost kind of looks like a duck foot or has kind of this ivy looking uh, shape to it. Not uh, oval, but has again this duck foot kind of pattern. So that is the characteristic of the Melina. I'm gonna tackle the Melina first. And so the Melina and the uh, Premna, both trees from Weigert's Nursery in Florida, come in a very heavy kind of soil and uh, pine bark based uh, soil. So it's gonna be super easy to um, get the soil away from the roots of this tree. Now again, we don't wanna totally bare root this uh, tree. Uh, we wanna leave some little bit of that initial soil, then we'll put it into our bonsai soil, and then we're gonna clean out the trees, both of them. So we'll start with the Melina. And again, uh, the soil, the tricky part about this soil, nice to see a lot of roots at the bottom of this uh, tree. One of the nice things about this soil is that it's gonna be free, pretty easy for us to work through pop right out super easy. You can see all the roots around this guy growing nice. But the challenge of the Weigert's soil, if you order trees from Weigert's and don't transplant them right away, is this soil can dry out super, super fast. So these trees sitting on my benches and all the heat we've had this summer, uh, they can dry out really fast and I'm watering them uh, two times a day, a couple of times. I even gave them another little spritz later on. So be careful of that. So as with all of our trees, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tease away the soil. We're gonna tease away the soil from the top on these trees. For these trees, we can see the trunk pretty well, but we wanna dig down a little bit again to see that Navari. Again, remember that part of the tree that meets the soil. We want that, that, that buttress or the Navari, the Japanese term for where the tree hits the soil. We want that to flare out as best we can. And then we know that's gonna be kind of the top of our new soil point. We're teasing away the soil. There's an awful lot of roots here, which is super nice to see. We gotta fit this into our little rectangle pot that we've chosen. I did bring up one of my small oval pots. I wanna see if my oval pot is deep enough for this tree. This tree is about an inch in diameter. The oval pot is about an inch in depth. And if I can successfully take away enough soil and roots without feeling like I'm gonna harm the tree, I might try the, uh, the smaller ovals that I have, and I'll show you those in a little bit. But so right here, um, we've already uh, exposed some of the trunk, and as it gets uh, down here under the soil a little bit, it does have a little bit of flare out, just a little bit. It's kind of right around in this section. Then it gets almost a little reverse down here. So that's where we want a whole bunch of roots down here to grow in a nice radial 360 degree pattern so we can make sure that we uh, thicken up that bottom of that trunk and uh, make it look real nice. I got one big trunk on this one right here. Excuse me, root. One root right there. That one might end up coming off because it's so much bigger than anything else. So everything else would take a long time to catch up to that. But I can also see right here, here's a root right there that I've uh, actually broken apart. It's dry. We'll cut that off anyway because it's a little bit high. We don't want that root there. So I'm starting to get some roots here. Um, here's a little, here's a nice root that's probably going to flare open a little bit. So that's kind of nice. That's getting a little bit wider down there. We repot our tropical trees, usually in uh, late June, July, and early August. Uh, if you go much past August, we're not going to have enough time for our trees to really establish themselves with their root structure. So I'd like to get my trees all done in, by the end of July. Um, we've had a really warm summer so far, so you could really could have started to do these trees in the first part of June here in Minnesota because we had a string of 10 or 11 days in the 90s, a couple of hundreds in there. Um, so we were able to do that. A lot, of, uh, a lot of the things that I read about both the Premna and the Molina is that they make good shoheen trees. So you can see this is just a little bit above the shoheen size. But if I were to trim this pretty hard back, I've got this really nice thick trunk right now. So there's a look at that trunk. We'll pull back a little bit now. So these leaves will really reduce nice on this species. So there's some big ones now here, but as we continue to put it into a bonsai pot every couple of years, and uh, maybe do some uh, partial defoliation and all our pruning throughout the time as a bonsai tree now, the leaves will start to reduce more and it'll look really nice. So here's my pot. I could almost put the whole thing into the pot right now just like this, but I do wanna trim some of the roots. We got plenty of roots here, so we are gonna go a little bit smaller. Just to show you that I brought up the oval tray 
super thin tray, that's gonna sit awfully high on there, right? So we'd have to cut half of this height away. We would need probably a little bit thicker uh, pot than that. But we'll keep playing a little bit here. We'll do some initial trimming now and uh, see if we can get it to uh, fit into our pot. So this could suffice into this uh, pot right here. This size right here could work. I'm gonna go a little bit thinner on that, on the bottom. So I'm gonna take out a little bit more on the bottom. Made that nice and shorter. Now it sits below the top of the rim here, which is really nice. So. I picked this tree out specifically because of this nice, really, really nice thick Y up here. Um, and then so that can be a, kind of the start of my tree. And then we'll get ramification from here on up and it'll be a nice big bushy tree. And I'm almost considering kind of a flat top type look. Um, and we'll see uh, what I do when I clean this tree up. All right. I have the wire in. I have a little bit of bonsai soil in there and we've got the tree. And I'm going to see what's going to be the front. I think this is going to be the front the way you're looking at it. Kind of like that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this long wire underneath this big root up in front. And tie it up to this guy. Tuck our wires down, and I have a tree in my pot that's pretty darn sturdy. Getting my chopstick down in there for a little bit of tamping down of that soil, get rid of some of those air pockets. We get rid of those air pockets so we have a nice balance of oxygen and water in our uh, soil compound, our soil mix. Again, we got a third of pumice, third of akadama, and third of lava rock. I'm going to go give this a good soaking outside. We'll bring it back in and we'll take a look at uh, some initial styling of our melina. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this branch right off there in the front. So this is my front. It splits into two really nicely here, and then it splits into two and two right here and here. So that's kind of nice. So what do I do with all this stuff down at the bottom? Well, we're not going to want any bulging over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take that right off. I don't think there's a need for those branches right there. We will get some bulging and I don't want any bulging there. There's already just a little bit there. So we're taking that off. Now it has an interesting branch growing this way. It almost looks like a tire swing branch. One of those big branches you'd have a tire swing hanging from. Um, but it goes directly almost like a 90 degree turn out there. Um, I don't like that. I'm just going to cut that one right off. And then it has this uh, branch back here, which was probably all new growth this year. So it goes to show you how, how fast it all can grow. Um, it's got the real light kind of green colored uh, trunk color. This has all kind of now gotten a brown, light tan color, and that is still green. Um, so this year, most of this year's growth, I'm sure, right there. So I have my style of my tree. It's a little bit of a slant, and then this one kind of goes more straight up here, and it uh, doesn't have a ton of movement past here. But this one kind of comes off nice over here, and then there's a branch right in our face that uh, splits actually from the main main branch. So the main branch goes back in here, but this has like a three-way branch right there that we can try to see if we can do something with that. So when we're cleaning a tree, regardless of the tree that we're looking at, we're always looking at you know branches that go straight down, branches that go straight up, um, branches that cross each other somewhere in the pattern. And these two right here are fighting each other right now. This one has got this nice low hanging branch, it's got some curve to it. This one sticks straight right out. And it is in the front of the design of the tree. Um, you know, I don't know if we want that branch there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. 
I'm gonna cut it flush for now. I don't even know if I'll keep this other branch on there. And uh, the bigger wounds on these, we will maybe put a little bit of cut paste on these. Recommended from some of the stuff that I was reading about these guys. But now you can see if I turn the tree a little bit, you can kind of see the tree goes up, splits here, and here's the main trunk, and then this comes up towards the, uh, the viewer, which we may not want either. So we don't want any crossing branches, so I took that branch off because I felt it was crossing. And as I go through here, I can pluck some uh, bottom facing leaves away. I can take this one right here away. So we have leaves that are more going up. Now these are straight up a little bit. These two are sideways. Um, here there's two growing right next to each other. I take that small one out. This one's growing straight down. So our, our cleaning principles are pretty consistent regardless of the tree. We want some trees to grow out and up and kind of have the pads that go up and not straight down. You can see this is the growth since it's been in my yard. This is the new growth with the fi finer leaves. It was probably chopped off right about here before they, they sent it out on their last prune. Um, and I'll get that one off. So I don't know how much of this uh, branch I'll actually keep. Depends on how much I shorten it up. You can cut down to uh, two, three leaves when you have five, six or more. So we'll certainly shorten that up regardless. And we'll see if I keep uh, all or some of this. It divides right there and there. I could cut it right there and this one could become the main branch. Depends on what happens up top. If you look at this tree right now, you can see the top parts here. This is kind of like where this grew in my yard since we put it here. So in, a, in about a month's time, about a month time or so, all these uh, uh, branches are starting to grow up. So you can tell they cut it down really nice and compact. Um, so I've got some more stuff going on in the back here of this tree. So if I spin it around, I'm going to duck it right here. This branch back in here, that crisscrosses and goes on the inside of the tree. So we're going to go ahead and take that branch out. And I bet you, and I will test these myself as well, that I can use this as a cutting. I'll be able to use that as a cutting. So I will save that for later. So that was cutting on the inside. And if you look at this tree, if I go like this for you, there's where they chopped it right there. Nice hard chop. So a, a tree you can chop pretty pretty uh, coarsely, huh? And, and then you can get some good growth and ramification from those chops. There's another little tiny little branch in here growing on the inside. Cut that one off. And now we want to be able to see the trunk up the tree line. I cut this branch over here, but now I still have this kind of coming in our face right here. But then it, go, it does go back and here's a little center piece. Get out of the light there if I can. Cut that little stump off. But here's one of those situations where this is coming out at us. This is going back. These two kind of crisscross in a way. But do I cut the one that's going right at us? Probably, so we can see the trunk line. This also could become the leader of the tree, if you will, although it's coming right at us. If we cut it back, it can start to curve back upwards because the thick part of this tree was chopped right here by my finger. So about another inch or two up from this branch. And there's a nice, there's a nice three-way split right here. These two are connected. This one's a little bit higher. So this could be some interesting, um, interesting bulges in the future right in here. Oops, I just snapped the branch right there. A little tiny one, gotta be careful. So I gotta take a peek and see what I want to do with this. And if I'm looking at flat top, this will all be a super nice flat top, just the way it is. It's looking pretty good, and these branches would thicken up. One thing we want to keep in mind when we're trimming these up, too, is that if this is the start of the ramification right here, the tree is going to be this tall, right, in the end. If you want the ramification to start here so the tree stays this tall, we have to cut way back and get, now get the finer and finer branches. So this one splits back here. Our main trunk here has a front and a back. Here's the back one. Got a couple really big leaves and it splits back here to, in a couple spots. If I just shorten that up and shorten that up, you know, we might be able to wire this at some point and twist it down like this. It gives it depth of field in the back, but things cross. So you got to be careful. So I'm, a bit of, I'm, at, I'm at a bit of a crossroads right here. 
Do I get rid of this great big branch or do I get rid of this one right here or do I get rid of some of both first and see? So this one grows right out at, at us. And if I cut this right here, this grows more up now, not as much at us because we're starting to get some ramification going this way. So here's this branch right here. It splits right here and goes upwards. So if I get rid of this even, and a little stump from an old cut, we've got a branch that now is growing more up instead of at us. We can see what'll, what'll happen in time with that branch. It still might come off, but now I can see this branch. And this branch comes out over here. There's a little subdivision right here, a nice subdivision there that goes up again. So I would cut that off right there. And now both these branches are coming up and kind of going this way, but you can see a little bit more of the branch structure by what we just cleaned up. If I cut this leaf off and I cut this leaf off, you can kind of see what's happening with this tree now. Now another dilemma for me is this big tree in the background. I liked how it split to begin with, but now it splits and it stops right there. And there's a nice, there's a nice branch in the back growing out here. I would have to cut that way back so it grows more up and not out. Do I cut this entire trunk off and leave this as the new movement? So it comes up here, splits here, and comes over this way, and this completely goes away. There's this branch in the back that also splits there. So here's a better look at it. Do I cut this big old branch right down here in the middle? Hmm, that's a, that's a big decision. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off here. I'm gonna trim this here and here. I don't know what this silhouette's gonna do yet, but I, I'm just gonna cut these back down to the lower section. Just a little trim in here. It'll give me that flat top back look again. Always leaving two to three leaves in case I wanna make sure that those do good things. So the tree overall doesn't look too bad. It's my first run at a Molina. This is gonna grow thick and bushy up on top here. My big dilemma still is here and here, these two tree branches, and then these guys back here. Do I keep this thick one as kind of the new leader and cut the whole thing off right there? Do I keep this or trim it back? Which one of these two has to go? And I think back here would hide the scar a little bit better. And make the tree grow more upright. That one can be taken for another uh, cutting. Right there, that could be a possible cutting. We'll test that out. It's a good time of year to do that for, the, for uh, how warm it's gonna be. Get that nice warm uh, recycled bonsai soil. So you see how that cleaned that up? Right there, got this one off right there. So this can stay, maybe can have some movement a little bit here if we need to. It's fighting with this one, so let's just take this one off. So that's by this back stump, which I can take off a little bit more of. Clean it up a little bit more. We don't want those bulges over time. So 
So these two are still still fighting each other. As you look at the tree, this bends over more, this goes up back, this one seems to be the most eyesore. But if I cut that off, there's nothing here for quite a while. There's one in the back here that's from the same spot, which could create more bulge as well. Let's do it. Let's take that off. And then these two just fight each other. So we're taking that off. So that'll make this guy back here grow more. I'll take the inside branch off. And it grows and splits over here in some nice, uh, nice fashion here. So I think we'll, I think we'll leave it right there. We've thinned this thing out pretty good. So we've got some main branches that will back bud, a lot of back budding on these trees and we'll hope we'll get a lot more pushback of growth and uh, we'll come back and look at this thing after the summer growth and we'll let it uh, relax when we bring it back indoors for the winter months um, or in my cold frame. Um, I'll look back again. I have to double check the Premna or the Molina. Uh, one of them you can keep at that 35 to 50 degree range which is my cold frame uh, instead of having it in my house. But they're both labeled as tropical trees. So I'll clean up this scar a little bit. I think we'll get some uh, cut paste on these guys and we'll call it a repot. Here we have the Molina. First repot and first trimming, pruning. Let's give it a spin. The second tree for today is going to be the Premna. So the Premna, another fast grower. Now it says from my research that these leaves grow back really small over time and the new leaves from this growth from when it's been in my yard, there's a lot of little growth in there which is super nice. But there's a leaf in here that, holy cow, that's an, that's an inch to two inches long there and super wide. Super long uh, leggy thing growing at the bottom. But let's get this out of the pot and let's see what we got with this guy. Now this has a twin trunk. Um, I don't know how down the twin trunk goes, how true the tr twin trunk is, but we will discover as we do with our typical repot, not knowing what our uh, nursery company typically does with trees and what it looks like until we start doing some digging. The last one had a super nice uh, uh, section of roots all the way around. Uh, this one has a little bit less roots, but not too much. It's a little bit more wet, so it's holding a little bit more moisture than the other one. Maybe it got a little bit more rainfall than the other one. They're on my workbench, totally exposed to the rain, about the same amount. So I'd imagine. So let's tease this one back and see what the root structure can provide on this one. This one looks like it has a lot more uh, surface roots that are just, you know, able to be maybe exposed here in this first repot, which is kind of nice. I do like to see some roots. If you notice this trunk on your left, my right here, this has a really nasty cross. These two branches, they split out like this and then they cross up here. So can we see that? Cross is right up there. So not as highly desirable of a tree. But I'll tell you one thing, as I peel the dirt away from these two trees or this twin trunk, this one tree that splits into two right below the soil line, is I'm loving the root structure on this one better than the other one. We've got more thick roots for some character. We've got some great roots on the tree that's going to do this wonky thing up top. It's got some really great roots down below. 
So this is where we could take this tree and possibly do more of a chunk, a tr uh, trunk chop and cut it down where it crisscrosses and then we'll just fix it over time. We'll get rid of that crisscross and we'll make our own tree from what it gave us out of the pot. I've got these trees that definitely are two trees that I could split right now. But just moving the trees apart that much made kind of a cool uh, tree. The two trees that are growing right next to each other. And do I keep it as one tree or two single trees or do I keep it as a double tree? The tree on the left here looks like there was a chop here and it grows up and kind of curves up here and then goes kind of backwards here, kind of neat. We could cut this tree off right here and maybe make this guy become the leader back here or this one become the leader because they're, they're opposite of each other. So. When we're looking at two trees and we see those branches, that's almost like that T branch, right? They're growing right opposite of each other. We're going to get rid of one of them. And we'll probably get rid of the inside tree because we have a twin trunk thing going here. We want to clean out that inside just a little bit. We've got some of these lower branches that are kind of fighting for stuff. Do I cut some of those off right away? Yeah, this one's growing right out at the viewer. No way we're going to keep that guy. So now we can see the design a little bit better. This, this tree has been covered by a lot of foliage, so it's a little weak and leggy. Um, this one's growing right out at us again. We don't want that. If this is the front, what if that's the front? I still don't mind the cuts I just made, but now we've got all this scraggly stuff in our face. We can cut off some old little uh, rickety areas. This trunk has a really nice set of movement there. It's super nice. So if we get rid of this trunk, if we get rid of this trunk entirely, we have a tree that grows up and goes over and back over this way and then comes up forward. So maybe we take this entire tree and take this one off. So just to show you, there, we definitely have two trees. I think I'm gonna keep this as its own tree. And we'll put that in right, we'll put that in next. So this one, there was not a lot of roots or soil left. So because I ripped these trees apart, they weren't connected by a uh, one, one main trunk, but ripping them a little bit made a lot of soil come out of there. And so you're gonna have to watch this one carefully. And I got a root right there that's kind of right at the surface. So we'll get a, we'll get a rock to hold that one down. Right. So the only way I can lean it now is if I get some soil underneath there. All right. So we have a little bit of an angled tree. It's angled a little bit too far back. But again, we can adjust for that. We can adjust for that after we repot next. I'm gonna go give this a water and we'll be right back. So since I went from two trees to one, we've got a couple of uh, easier trims on this one. It's growing straight down. That one's straight down. And that one's going down, hanging on the soil. So we'll keep this as one of our primary branches and we'll shorten and we'll shorten, we'll shorten here and here. And here I'm just, I'm just giving this a haircut because we just have very little soil left. 
the original soil. So this one goes up a little bit more. This one's going that way. Our old trunk line was right there. We'll see. We'll see what time will do to this guy. I'm going to go ahead and trim that trunk off now a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit lower. And we'll see. Maybe the uh, destruction of or the separation of two trees into uh, uh, single trunks, you know, one twin trunk into two single trunks wasn't the best idea, uh, but we're gonna go with this for now. And um, the only thing that's wrong about, well, there's a lot of things that are probably wrong in this tree to a lot of people's eyes, but we got some initial movement here. Um, this could become the new main trunk here. So we got this going up here and this could come up here really nicely. So if that's the main trunk, may I be so bold as to take that off. Then we got this on this side, which is splitting over like that. We can cut that off. And so we've got boom, 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 and this one back here. This will do something back here and likely back bud. This one's back here. So this is a Charlie Brown tree. Let's go with that. It's the Charlie Brown Premna. But we have some movement. This should back bud like crazy. We have just a little bit of roots after uh, uh, separating the trees. So I think I have enough foliage to support that. We'll keep it out of the direct sun for a couple of uh, a week or two, and then we'll hope it just goes and then grows really crazy and wild and gets all thick for us again. So there's uh, tree number two separated into part number one. Let's get the other one in a pot. So part two of the second tree that was a twin and now is solo has most of the roots left on it, but it's got this really awful crisscross up on the tree crisscross, crisscross. So we have to examine this now and see what's going to be our front. Um, what do we think will be the best branch to keep in the long run? So there's no roots on the back side very much, but there's a whole bunch of roots on this side right here. So if that could be the front, we could see a lot more roots. But then which branch would we keep? And to be honest, when I look at this tree, this curving branch right here, this movement in that branch compared to this straight up and down branch is a lot more attractive to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this branch off right there. And we just lost about 40, 45% of our tree. So we got rid of that crazy part of the crisscrossing trunk and you'll see now look at the movement in that tree that's more fun for me anyway that was more fun more fun movement so if i slant this one over this way i could go this way because this this strong root structure this strong root structure will look like it's holding it into the ground a little bit better so we're going to go ahead and we're going to thin out just a little bit of this bottom here to see if we can slant this thing the way we want it yeah Sure we can. We're not taking off any more roots. We're just going to let this go. This one I could probably cut off because it's a little high. We're hiding the wound. This coming right at us doesn't make any sense. So there we have that right there. Let's get our soil in here and some wire and let's get this one going.
two of our twin trunk has been chopped into one main trunk, which has some nice movement to it. Now this will probably never become a nice looking trunk per se. I know the bottom branch is gonna go, this is gonna go. We might need to chop that a little bit tighter and we'll put some cut paste on there. So we can't even see the cut at all right now. And we've got this branch coming up here like it's split really funky down below. So we can kind of see what that'll do. We'll get rid of that one. And I'm gonna get rid of this one only because this area right in here is a little bit, a little bit thicker here than it is down here. We got a little reverse taper right here now. So this branch right here, if I keep it, there's the, there's where it, it probably would just have too much, too much growth here and thicken this up and we wouldn't have anything down there. So I think we have to cut this off. And so we will. And we'll cut this down as flush as we can. And we'll put cut paste on this great big wound. So we have um, almost like a tree that's growing out on the cliff up in the North Shore of Minnesota, kind of like a witching tree. And it's almost like a bird's nest up here of a big fluff of a foliage. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this where it splits into two. Cut that off. I'm gonna cut this off right here. I'm gonna cut that off right here. This grows right at us. Let's cut that one off. Let's shorten this one. Let's shorten that one. Let's shorten this one. Let's actually shorten this one. Yeah, let's shorten it right there. I like the aggressive cut. It makes the tree go back up towards the top. We have a squiggly right in our face. We'll take that off. We've got these two guys. Look at this movement naturally trying to find the light already. We won't mess, mess with any of that. I'll take that one off so it's not staring at us. This one's growing right at the crotch of that one. That'll make a bulge. We don't want that. And there you see our line goes up there. We have this really interesting tree. It's got some really interesting movement for such a young tree and it's gonna thicken up. And we'll just kind of see where it grows from here. So now these are two branches growing opposite of each other, but it grows on the back side of our tree right there. This could be a better front someday if I twist it a little bit more, but right now we have it that way. That kind of works either way. We got some really neat movement. This could become a puff ball of a tree. I could cut this whole branch off down to here and make it go back this way completely, almost like an S curve, but I don't want that. I don't think tropical trees look that good in that situation. Um, we got this growing out here, a couple different directions here. We got a double branch in here, so I'm going to cut this one off. It splits right there nice. I'll cut the tip off. I'll cut down to four, five, six branches instead of all of those. There we go. And I think, you know, we can call it right there. We don't have to do anything more to this tree. We're just going to let this now push out this summer and heal up, get the roots, get established. And we're good to go with another Premna in a pot. Well, that was a lot of fun. I took two trees and got three out of them. I think the twin trunk look would have still been pretty cool. Um, there's a couple other selections out in my yard that are twin and triple trunk, and I think there'll be a few extra at the, after the workshop. I'll buy a couple extra and have some fun with those trees as well here in the coming couple of weeks. But for what I got for these two trees, these two forest uh, twin trunk turned into some really gnarly looking uh, movement type trees. So we got the Molina back here, the Parrot's Beak, um, and the Premna. And two Premnas now from one. Had a lot of fun uh, cutting those up. I'm gonna put some cut paste on these guys here 
and uh, then call it a, a day for these and put them all outside in that nice uh, upper shelf of my workbench so we're in a good situation. Looks like rain is uh, still uh, a little drizzling out there. We're gonna get another wave of rain coming up so they'll get moist, moisture, a lot of water, and they'll be in good shape. This was a lot of fun. Hey, thanks for watching. Click like, tell all your friends to subscribe. Do appreciate uh, all the comments as always. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you very soon on another edition of Dave's Bonsai.